Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to black border quad chimps for version 25.0. This will be the ending setup and it uses the molar maulers and spiked balls. To start off, we are going to need four dart monkeys, one at the top, one at the left, and one at the right. The bottom dart monkey will come later and these placements will all be behind the bush, but they do not need to be perfect. For round seven, I'm going to need to set this one on the right to strong so it hits one extra balloon and then we're going to get the fourth dart monkey at the bottom when we have enough money for it and we can set that dart monkey that was on strong back to first. So as you notice I do have auto start on for this recording. That's because I got pretty comfortable with the early game using auto start but it's definitely recommended to not use it. On round 9 here, we're going to be placing our sniper as soon as possible. You want to get it down really early, and this placement is very important. You want to have some of his line of sight be blocked by that bush, because we are going to need that later. And for round 9, you are going to keep him on first, just in case something is already pretty far by. But after that, you set him on strong, and he stays on strong. Round 10 and 11 are going to pass. And after round 11, we are going to buy a ninja monkey. So I'm getting that ninja monkey right now. The placement should be in line with the very edges of the outer track, but it's not too bad if you mess it up a little bit. Just get it down early and you will be fine. Next, on round 14, we're going to be placing another ninja on the same side back there. And on 15, we're going to be upgrading the right ninja to 001. While round 14 and 15 are playing out, I would like to note that in the description, I will have a pinned comment that has extra resources, including a written guide, and if any updates happen, I will also put that there. So be sure to look at the description, because the written guide can actually be very helpful. Anyways, back on to the strategy for round 16, I'm going to upgrade the 001 ninja to 101, and then we're going to be working on the same thing on the left side with that ninja. On 20, we're going to be upgrading the left ninja to 201. And we're going to do the same with the right ninja. And on 23, I'm going to upgrade the sniper to 100 to help out with the blacks and whites on 23. Now we're going to save up for the double shot on the left ninja. And we're, I'm just going to go back and forth upgrading these ninjas. And then we also are going to place Striker Jones. This does not need much explaining, so I'll come back when something more important comes. So just watch out when I upgrade the ninjas and follow along with that. The Biker Bones placement is not that bad. Just put it above the Dart Monkey and you don't want to have it to, to the left or to the right. And then we're going to go back to upgrading these ninjas. As well as upgrading the ninja, I'm going to upgrade the sniper 
it will eventually be 302 and on the first wave of 36 we use the striker stun ability to make sure that all those pinks go down just for safety after the 302 sniper we're gonna get a 00 spec at the back of the top right lane the placement is pretty important because it sets up all the other placements and then I'm going to show you a little trick that we use to beat round 40. Coming back on round 40, if you have your auto start on, you need to turn it off because this trick is pretty important. We're going to place a ice monkey 101 and this ice monkey will catch the ceramic so the deadly precision can knock each one out before they come out. So you can place it around here. The placement can vary depending on the caltrop RNG, so if you get this case where not all of them pop from the sniper, the spack at the back will clean it up and if that happens like there, you need to use the concussive shell and that will clean up. Sometimes you don't need to do that and the sniper will get all of the ceramics, but just in case that's pretty important. On 41, we're going to be getting a, another spack right there and we're going to be upgrading each one to 100 just so we don't die to random RNG. Forty-three is a round that can get really close, so as soon as you see the first ceramic on the bottom side, you want to use the striker stun. Most of the time it will go to the bottom, but sometimes it goes to the top, but either way, you should be fine if you use the striker stun. We are going to keep playing the rounds and come back on round 47, where we need to do our next task. On round 47, we're going to be placing these villages. These placements are extremely important, so what I do is I have it line up with the edge of the track and that very far piece of yellow banner, and that's the edge of the range that lines up. On the top side, we're going to be getting this back, no, the village to 002, but on the bottom side, we only get the village to 001 because what we need to do is afford an upgrade really fast. So we get 102, I mean 120 on the top side, and 110 on the bottom side, but we use the stun and upgrade it to 120 as soon as possible. And if you do that, this round will be fine. Now we're going to continue upgrading these spike factories. So starting with 220 on the top side and we're going to be getting that to spiked balls. And then we're also after that going to be grabbing the second discount upgrade on the bottom village and grabbing the spiked balls there as well in time for 49. You want to get both of these upgrades pretty quickly so make sure that you have the bar over just to get the upgrade as soon as possible. Also on 49, you can use Striker's Stunt ability for safety. You want to use this sooner than I did, because as you can see, this round was pretty close, and the Striker's Stunt went kind of in a bad place, so if you use it earlier, it will be more concentrated and go towards the bottom, and it will make this round easier. Next, I'm going to be getting some Alchemists to Alk buff the Spike Factories. You want to get it right overhead, and this ALK will later be a 401, so the placements are pretty important as well. Actually, all of these placements up here are pretty important because you have to jam a lot of stuff in. So 
don't place it in a bad spot, just right overhead and it will be good. We're going to be starting with 300 on the top side, and on the bottom side we're going to be getting 300 as soon as possible, and also stun the Moabs that come out. Next we're going to get the second set of spike factories, and we're going to slowly upgrade these spike factories as we go along. So I kind of go back and forth upgrading them, and on round 52, you'll get these two mobs together. I use the stun at the right time, so we stun both of them, which will make it a bit easier. And then we're going to be getting the faster throwing on each side, so each spike factory will have a bit of brew. Then we're going to continue upgrading the spike factories in the order that I do, and use the stun when I do as well. Round 57 is a round that can be a little tight, so be sure that you use your stun at a good time, and also buy the spiked balls upgrade as fast as you possibly can as well. If you are a little late on these timings and abilities, you could die in this round, so you need to be really quick and sure that you have the right thing. Next we're going to be getting the bombs, we're going to shove these right in between the village and the alchemist and they're going to become 003 and then 203 shortly. These will be later become 204s but we won't be working on that right now. As you can see we're going to upgrade them to 203 a little bit later. So round 63, we're going to get this ice monkey here. This ice monkey will go to 001, and I get drums on the bottom. The ice monkey helps to all the ceramics, and we're going to be using it later, so it's double win. And we use the striker stun ability on the first two waves, but don't use it on the last wave, because we are going to be needing the stun back up for round 64, which is also a pretty tight round. Round 63 is not that tight if you have all your placements correct and the ALK going on the right towers. Then on round 64, we're going to be getting a Moab Mauler on each side, 0, 3, 0, and we're going to set this on strong for this round only. After round 64, all Moab Maulers will be on first. So we get these Moab Maulers down, we just try to 
squeeze them in as close as possible. Start with the bottom one and then upgrade the top one to 030 as soon as possible and use striker stun to get a mob and a fortified mob in the same one.
Now I'm coming back in the 90s to explain each round and every trick that you need. For round 90, it's pretty simple. The smalls eat everything, but what I'm doing here is setting up the engineers for the foam to decamo the DDTs, and we're going to be needing these later, later on rounds like 95 and 99. 91 is fine, we're just going to be using the concussive shell ability. For 92, I'm going to start setting up the stall with the 030 heli and the 012 ice, but we are not going to need it until 93. Also on 92, we're going to be using Striker Jones level 20 ability on these ZOMGs to just make sure they go down, and that, that will be good. And as you can see, I get the ice monkey and the downdraft to hook in ceramics at the bottom right there to stall for abilities each round. If you aren't very good at this, you could practice in sandbox to make it a little easier. Now, coming back on round 93, we're just going to be using the Sabo to help take out the DDTs and these fortified mobs, and also use the concussive ability, and we're going to be getting a stall for round 94. On round 94, we're going to be using the Artillery Command, which is Striker Jones level 20, on the ZOMGs. And we can also use the Sabotage ability to help out. And we're also going to get the stall, so we get these abilities back for round 95. Ninety five we're gonna be getting the zero zero four mortar mid round. Once we get the zero zero four we can upgrade to two zero four, but basically we're gonna be microing this on all the fortified mobs and fortified B BFBs so they lose their fortified property and they will be easier to take out. On ninety five, shortly after the DDTs come in, we're gonna be using the Sabo to slow them down, and a little bit after that we're also going to be using our artillery command to t help take out the fortified moabs. And we're just to micro the mortar from the top to the bottom, and it's pretty easy like that, and we're going to stall as well. Ninety-six can be a little tricky, so you just need to use your abilities at the right time, and it will be fine. When the fortified mobs come out, which is pretty early, we're going to be using our sabotage ability because we don't want them to be taking out all of our spikes for when the ZOMGs come in. So we use the sabotage ability early, and then later on, when the ZOMGs come in, we use the level twenty to help take out that top layer. And I also buy the mob assassin mid round so that we can use that on the ZOMGs as well. Also note that you can reset the ability cooldowns with the level 20 ability, so you want to use the assassin before you hit the level 20, so you can use it again when you hit that ability. Ninety-seven is it much? You just use the assassin abilities on the fortified ZOMGs and defortify the BFBs when they break open. Also, make sure that you have the second assassin on the top as well. And now we are going to be saving for the first strike on round one hundred.
because we have the shattering shells around 98 is actually pretty easy but what i also do is i remove that obstacle on the right to make it a little bit easier what we're going to be doing is just microing the mortar on these three sides so everything gets defortified and we spam the concussive shells and the assassin abilities whenever they come up and we're going to be using striker jones level 20 when these zomgs come in but when the zomg layer breaks down to bfbs we use the sabo so the level 20 ability and then the sabo comes a little bit later and around 95 98 i mean should be fine Now on round 99, we need to use the Sabo ability the second that the round starts, or else you will die because you don't have enough spalls. So you use that as soon as it starts, and then when the fortified DDTs come in, use the assassin abilities, then quickly use the level 20, and go back to the assassins. And if you do that, you will have enough spalls on the backside to tank those DDTs that don't get decamoed and round 99 will be fine. Just be quick using your abilities because it is a little tight and we do buy the first strike ability right there. Round 100 is also a pretty easy round to mess up because we are going to need to be using first strike timing so if you aren't used to this definitely try it out in the sandbox so you don't mess it up when you're this far. What we're going to do is use the assassin abilities twice right there, command, and then use them again and then the bad's going to be a little bit weaker so when it comes around we have all of these more maulers attacking them and then we can use the assassin abilities again and this is we're going to and this is where we're going to time our first strike it's about to break now so we use first strike right now and it takes out everything on the inside and we beat quad chimps with a black border so here's the pop counts for everything and good luck trying to get it for yourself.